Hey guys, in today's video, we have the process of creating a modeling to the final render of a product design. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel, leave your like and comment here what I would like to see in the next videos. So, let's start by creating the model of our product. Using a cylinder, we will create the base of the model. We will separate the top with the detach to create the product's lid. We use some modifiers to refine the model's parts. In the base parts, we will extrude the ads to create a connection with the lid. For the ads, remember to apply a chamfer to keep in the edge hard. I'm going to create some more details on the parts. We are not going to leave this part exposed, so don't worry about creating the identically. We are done with the base, we will do the same with the leads creating a connection with the base of the model. Once we have finished modeling our products, we will now create a plan for the model. We also create a liquid part using some of the software tools but we don't use liquid simulation for this product yet. We create a new plane. And here we add a few more lines so that we have a mesh to create the effect. We adjust the size and position of the piece. As well as the rotation and with that we already have what will be our liquids in the future. Since we are going to create a handle of our product, I will add a camera so that we can get an idea of how the liquid will behave in the final image. We adjust the camera according to the desired angle. I will change the interface to view the camera from the sides and on the other sides we have the space to model. Camera adjustments such as perspectives and image distortion are essential to capture a better image of our products. I take the opportunity to change the aspect radio of the image to better encompass of our model. Now that we have a camera already configured, we will create a liquid in your scene. To do this, I return to the plan and adjust its scale a little bit. I will add an edit poly and we use the shift tool to create a small ripples. I recommend that you use a reference image to create this type of detail. It is essential to create this detail based on the other work. I add a camera image to the skin to make it easy to see how everything fits together. When creating a good base for liquid, I release it that I need more resolution in the plan. And for that, I add the open subdivide modifier. That way, I can return to the edit poly and continue adjusting the model in a lighter mesh, but a ready visualization in the final result. When I am satisfied with the liquid, we can add another level of subdivision and convert the object to editable poly. Now, we need to create the model's cutouts in the liquid that was created. To do this, I will create a copy of the liquid and the model's base. We add the shell to give thickness to the liquid. We will increase off the scale of the object a little so that the liquid's cut out a little larger. We can position it so that the pass through the liquid and add the boolean modifier. With the modifier, we use the subtract option to create the cutouts in the other mesh. We can convert it to editable poly again and delete the inside of the circle. Now, using the retopology modifier, we will create the lighter mesh of our liquid. Once that is done, we can add some loops to the edges to round them and also add the modifier to soften the shape. Inside, I see that we can adjust size a little and thus we have the liquid created. Now that we have all the object created, let's create the light in your scene. In this project, the render will be Corona render. So let's create the Corona lights. We will create basic lights with just four lights. One light on top, one in the front, one in the back and also the backdrop light. Before settings the intensity of lights, 
Let's add the materials of our object in the skin. I will use most of the materials from the Corona library itself. Just drag the materials and then apply them to the model. At the base of product, I will create a texture in Substance Painter. And to do this, I had to first create the UV mesh of our model right here in 3ds Max. After opening the mesh, we'll select only the object and export it to Substance. With the Substance, I'll create some text and add the logo of our product. Since I will only use the base color map, I did don't worry about configuring reflection and other maps with the Substance Painter. After creating the map, I'll export the texture to folder and then just load the image here in 3ds Max and it will already working correctly in the model. In addition to the materials, I loaded on Edit Array to get better general light to the scene. As for the lights, since we are only using an HRI, we will leave them with very low values just to bring out some details in the piece. On the floor, I am using a reflective material because of the liquid to give a mirror effect to the model. With this, the lights should be disabled and then reflection and you can also select so that they are not seen directly on a specific object such as the floor. Here, we have an idea of how the model is and without disable the light on the reflection and the floor and the liquids. To show these liquid artifacts, we must change the position on the floor. Increase the height a little so that it does not touch on the floor and this problem will be solved. After adjusting the light and also changing the color of the model's leads, we have a more satisfactory result. I recommend that when creating this type of model, you look for the lights that gives great emphasis to the products. We have some option with the 3ds Max, but we will see this in post-production within Photoshop. After configuring the lights and colors of entire the model a little better, we go to the final render. In the render setup, I add an ID and the wired color to render elements to make it easy to select the object in the scene in the Photoshop. The other settings are factory are default, except for the nose level, which I lift at 5%. With the image created, we export now the image to begin post-production. Now that we have exported the maps to the Photoshop, we'll make some adjustments. In Light Maps, we use the screen option to add light to the model. As you can see here, this light from the top is added and we can adjust its intensity right here on the side. Let's do the same with the clipping light and also with the front light. Once that is done, we will add an effects on the background. To do this, I like to select the color and increase the brightness and saturation in the upper part. After creating these two bands, and in the opposition lower corner, we will do the same but with the color in darker colors. After that, I will use Gaussian Blur to break the upper color transition. Finally, we adjust the intensity of this detail. In addition, we can use the vignette effect to bring the focus of the image to the center of the product, which is the most important part. To do this is very simple. Just create a new layer, go to ground and change it to circular. We create a gradient in the center and blend the image using the overlay option. Adjust the intensity so that the effect is not too strong. I'm creating another, in this time using the color bump option to blend in the image. To finish the image, we will add a little more contrast to the scene. For the liquid, we'll give it a color tone that matches to the object so that it's not transparent. In addition, we'll refine the lights in the general color palettes of our image a little. And this was the final result of our product. 
I hope you enjoy the content. See you next time. Bye. Subscribe to the channel. It's very important.